G'day folks, it is an exciting day in the Wise Guy History household because today we have the arrival in the post of the 7th Citadel. Uh, this is the long-awaited sequel to the 7th Continent. You may have heard me speak about the 7th Continent before. A wonderfully innovative, fascinating, solo slash cooperative adventure exploration survival puzzle game for my wife and i we played it cooperatively and we loved the seventh continent when it first came out i we played dozens of hours of the seventh continent um i rated it at a 10 on board game geek i very quickly, it blew me away, and we felt it would be one of the one of our top games of all time. It fell from favour, and you may have heard me speak about this before, um, because of that survival element. Um, we love the puzzle element. We love the exploration. We love the deck building element. You have this character with a deck of cards, and you are adding skills, and you are adding items, and and etc. We loved all of that. We loved exploring this map. It was amazing, and this sort of very cryptic clue based uh puzzle element as you're exploring and trying to figure out these yeah really vague and cryptic clues over dozens of hours was a fascinating experience for us and so you know my wife and i played it side by side and it was a wonderful experience but again the survival element the need your, your deck in the seventh continent your deck of cards uh, which you drew from to perform actions was your life and when your deck ran out you died. And that became very frustrating over time. You'd have to keep hunting and fishing to replenish your deck. And yeah, look, after, after dozens of hours, it became a bit tiring and repetitive. And so we tired of the seventh continent and the expansion made it worse for reasons which I won't go into. And so when the seventh Citadel appeared on Kickstarter, I was a little skeptical. Um, I thought, well, how is this different? You, it, the art is the same designers, um, same art, uh, serious pulp, same publisher. I thought, well, how is this going to be different? And I'll show the page in just a moment. The key, the key point at which I thought, wow, this is a game for me, is when I saw on Kickstarter, and I'll pop this up so you can see, when I saw this line here, the survival, crafting, hunting, die and retry is no longer the heart of the game. I read that line and I thought, bang on. That is exactly what I didn't like about the Seventh Continent. That is exactly what I hoped they would improve in the Seventh Citadel. And I backed this immediately. That was back in September-ish 2020. So it's been nearly three and a half years. Component quality is the same as 7th Continent. Really solid, sturdy box, very hefty, um, serious pulp design. The key difference, so instead of that survival element where you have to keep returning to hunt to replenish your deck, to go and do the things you want to do. Really what you want to do is, what we wanted to do was explore and solve these puzzles. And we had to keep returning to hunting grounds or fishing grounds to rebuild our decks. And you'd repeat this ad nauseum till literally you're sick of it. It's gone from the Seventh Citadel. Instead, there are, that's a bookmark. That's a nice, I was wondering what this was. It's a life tracker. It's a Seventh Citadel bookmark. Really nice art. Um, there's a welcome note from Ludovic and Bruno from Serious Pulp. They are the designers. Ludovic is the artist. Um, and I, look, the art in this is amazing. It was the, the, I've seen a lot of the art through previews. Same art as in this, oh, yeah, same art designer, uh, Ludovic, as in the Seventh Continent. This is the rule book, and I haven't looked at, I haven't seen this, but I've seen the beta rule book, so I've had a read through that, and I don't think much has changed in sort of the core designs. What is key here? The key difference, if you're wondering, the key difference, how they, how are they fixing that survival element, is you now have a life tracker, and I'm keen to see what this looks like. Um, so we're, we'll probably see the life trackers in a moment, but instead of your deck being your life point, and when your deck runs out, you die, in the Seventh Citadel, you have a life point tracker. Here we go, life point counters like this. And when this runs out, 
you become unconscious. If all players become unconscious, if they all run out of life, then you lose the game. But your deck, your personal deck can run out and you don't die. In Seven Citadel, when your deck runs out, you lose five life points and you can continue. And I told my wife that and she was like, oh, that's brilliant. That's exactly the solution we wanted in the Seventh Continent. So you can sense my excitement about this game. Um, if you don't know anything about the Seventh Continent, or the Seventh Citadel, I, it, it's, it's Aik me soloed, brilliantly soloed. It is very good cooperative, and it's a great family game. So we, my wife and I played it, and we're thinking maybe we'll introduce the kids. The kids are a bit older, it's been four, five, six years since we played Seventh Continent. Maybe we'll see if the kids are interested in this. You play cooperatively, you discuss things together, you get, and you'll see in just a moment, you get these cards with really, as I said, abstract, cryptic clues on them, and you're trying to solve the threat. Okay, so the object and overview of the game. It's a cooperative exploration and adventure board game in which you play against the game and try to beat a threat that looms over you. You may take on the challenge alone or in a team of two, three, and four adventurers. And I will say it works We've played it one, two, and three. I haven't played with four, because um, my son was a bit young at the time, but my daughter played it, and it works well at any play count. It works much the same. There isn't much of a distinction between one, two, or three players. Uh, works equally well. So yeah, no sort of disadvantage to playing one, two, or three, or four. You win if you manage to overcome the threat you choose to face. When this happens, it is clearly stated by the game. You lose if all characters are unconscious or an in-game th effect reads your adventure ends here. When you beat a threat or your adventure ends prematurely, you must restart a new adventure. So there is, um, we found, okay, so the missions can take dozens of hours. You, you leave the game set up, you can pack it up, it takes 30 seconds to pack it up, 30 seconds to you know, set it all up again, very easy to pack up and, 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 um, and save and reset. We left our game right here on the table. Um, just easier to leave it set up. Um, you can rest whenever you want though, it's very easy to do so. Um, so yeah, and, and when you finish a, a, a mission, you'll often, well, you'll often fail the mission first time around. Don't be surprised if that happens. I don't know about Seventh Citadel, probably the same, but you can retry it. And there is a lot of replayability in the sense of that exploration adventure puzzle element. The survival element is gone or is being reduced to instead this life point counter. So that will, I think, further enhance the replayability. As I mentioned, we sank dozens, I would posit possibly over 60, 70, 80 hours of gameplay into the Seventh Continent. I anticipate much the same here. So, uh, the rule book. It, this is really nice, solid paper stock. It's, it's um, yeah, quite thick. Uh, you have a summary of all the component card types. This is fundamentally a card, a card well, it's not a card game, but it uses cards as a basis for map building. So you can see these kind of tiles here. They string together, and I'm going to give a big spoiler here. I will show you the components of Seventh Citadel through this video, but I want to show you what the map looks like. So spoiler it, if a brief spoiler, I'm going to show you a map from the Seventh Continent that I have from one of my photos. So my wife and I used these kind of photos. Sorry, let me bring it up to kind of refresh our memory. It's kind of cheating, but you know, rather than relying on our memory and where things were, we'd often take these photos and say, oh, we have to backtrack two tiles. We might be here and we're like, well, where was that fishing spot? Oh, we go two tiles up and then one tile to the left. And you know, if we get here, we can go fishing. Or where was that passage across to that, that you know, cave? Oh, we have to go two tiles up and one to the right. So this is what the map looks like. And you explore this one tile at a time. Um, and it, it's this exploration element that we love finding out about this, this, this world. And this is only a small part of the map. It, is, it was much bigger than this. I do have another image of another part of the map. Um, so here you can see sort of the southern part of the map uh, and some of the landscape. You have, this is my wife's character, Howard Lovecraft, and I was this person over here. I'm not sure who I was, but we have our, we have our items that we've equipped. I have wall paint, a camouflage outfit, I have snowshoes. Uh, it's quite a sprawling game, so it really did take over. Uh, <laughs> not only our play area, but yeah, we ended up having to kind of use some extra space. So these cards drive every aspect of the game. They are your terrain, they are your events, they are your actions, items, skills, they are your deck which you use to check if um, 
you are successful or unsuccessful in attempting to do something. You might be trying to climb a cliff and you'll be drawing cards looking for success icons on these cards. And you might need a success of three from five cards. So you'll be gradually over time um, building your deck, enhancing your skills, equipping better items and things like that. Um, the game components, it, so throughout the course of the game, the, the game may say, uh, find tile 34 and place it here. So you'll draw and you'll dive into this, these dividers to find card 34 and place it. Very easy, quick to reference. Um, yeah, really well organized, which you'll see, I'm sure, in just a moment. Really nice overview of the components. The turn sequence is very straightforward. It's really quite an easy game to play. The, the complete, it's not even that complex. The, the difficulty lies in solving the puzzles and in making the right decisions to survive um, and complete your goal. So yeah, if you like that kind of cryptic puzzle, it's not a kind of deduction puzzle like the search for planet X or Cluedo where you're sort of ticking boxes. It's like you have this map and you might say, find the pirate treasure, X marks the spot. And you think, what does that mean? X marks the spot. And there might be this sort of abstract X on the map or something. I'm sort of, that's, that doesn't actually happen. I'm not spoiling anything here, but it's that kind of abstract cryptic puzzle that you're working to solve. There, there are often hidden symbols on the map. So I think there's um, spotting a hidden number. You may find hidden numbers on some of these tiles. So whenever we discover a new tile, my wife and I will bring it up really close and explore. And I'll show you some of the cards in just a moment. I don't want to spoil too much, but I am keen to see what it looks like. Um, and then various icons that, again, just tweak the rules a little bit. All right, I do not know what this is. This is, um, oh, this summary sheets, wonderful. We have a world map, wow, okay. So this takes place, I should also point out, Seventh Continent is sort of an alternate history where you play famous explorers and artists. So you saw Howard Lovecraft. At one point in a game, I was Amelia Earhart, um, and I think, I think you can be, is it, um, I, I know you had Frankenstein's monster, so you must have been Dr. Frankenstein and his monster or something like that. So you play sort of historical and fictional characters. In this, the setting is an alternative uh, medieval fantasy world. Um, think along the lines of, I guess, Middle Earth-ish. And the broad story is, I believe, that you have escaped from a citadel, but there is this threat looming over you. Now this seems, this is really interesting. It says, name of your community, your production, your defense, your knowledge, your influence. This is all new. So I'm very curious as to how that works. As I mentioned, I did look at the rule book, but I don't recall seeing this kind of stuff happening. Um, so there are four of those community sheets. We have a dialogue, this is a hefty dialogue book. We have, an 87 page dialogue book with references to dialogue with local inhabitants. I love that element of, of gameplay. It gives it a bit of a role playing game uh, as seen in Tainted Grail, uh, which we loved to a point. A new beginning, this is the interactive scenario, wonderful. So Seventh Continent came with something similar, eases you into the gameplay. Uh, you have an introductory deck, fairly quick little story to get you going. Great way to learn the game. The drums of resolutions. Now I believe these might be the missions. So in the seventh continent, the missions were literally one card long. These, yes, they seem to be, this is your, this, this is at least one story or threat. That's another. And I don't know if uh, there may be more. This is on the edge of peril. That looks to be another one. This expansion contains two divides and 30 cards to spice up your adventure. It can't be played without the base game. Some foam inserts to um, <laughs> divide storage. I want to look at these, these plastic components. So you will, you will, it's taped on, that's why it's not opening. You will use little miniatures, which you can kind of see on the left-hand side there, to note where you are. With the seventh continent, I painted mine up just to give them a bit more flavor. I might do the same here. They are pretty small. It's just to really to show you know, where you are on the map and you move your little character um, around. So there's a green, two green characters. There's a green, a blue, a red, and a yellow. Your life counter can go up to 99 and down to zero. There is a magnifying glass because as I said, you are often zooming in on these cards to look for those hidden numbers. You don't really, I mean, 
uh, if you have good eyesight, you won't need this magnifying glass, but I'm sure it, uh, it, it probably come in handy for many. Uh, we have the character tokens if you prefer to use standees. These are the card dividers, dividing the different cards, making it really easy to consult the decks. And I want to open a random pack of cards. So these, um, let me get my seventh continent cards and we'll do a quick comparison of size. Okay, so let's pull out card number 100. So yeah, exactly the same size. My memory was that they were, these were smaller, but they're exactly the same. Uh, this is a seventh continent card. That's a paranoid card. That's an effect or a consequence of an action. So let's crack open the 250s. And uh, just on top here, we can see an item that you can collect, padded gambeson. During the consequent step, roll a die. If you roll a one return, this is not a die rolling game, um, but some of the, as you can see in this example, some of the items may ask you to roll a die. And it's, I think from my impression is that's not too common in occurrence. It's really about exploring and drawing cards, looking for success. So I don't want, spoiler alert, I will be just flicking through these very quickly without paying too much attention to the text or content. So here's an example of a map tile. And if you are on this tile, if you have your character sitting on this tile as an action, you can move to the next tile. And it might say, you know, draw card 240. So you'll flick through the deck looking for card 240. And again, oh, it's in the other, other pack that I haven't unlocked, but um, yeah, it might uncover a new tile that connects. And gradually you build this map together. Here's somebody you can talk to. Here is something you can interact with. It looks like um, okay, a bit of a meeting, a negotiation with some local people. Um, and it refers you to card 346. You know, you've got sheep and what's the sheep doing? Okay, uh, <laughs> the timid creature creatures flee as you try to approach. Do you try and grab them and keep them as a prize? Um, you can do this or do this. And if you succeed, you take that card. If you fail, you suffer some consequences. Um, and so you'll see a lot of those actions on these cards. If you wanna try this, this is how many cards you must draw. You must draw at least one needing five successes. But of course you can, you can draw, um, this is often locked, but in this case it's one or more. So you can draw, let's say seven cards, hoping for five successes. Now you might get those five successes in the first three cards you draw, but you've committed to drawing seven cards, you have to keep drawing. Which means that you're exhausting your deck, which means you're closer to running out of cards in your deck, which in the seventh Citadel means that you lose some life points, but you don't instantly become, uh, you don't instantly die. Consequences of success, consequences of failure. Okay, so this, another difference here is that Seventh Citadel uses these dice which modify your successes needed. So it might say you need five successes and when you complete that, it goes dials down to four and then you'll need four successes on another attempt. And when you complete that, it dials down to three. So it's something like the dice will mostly, I believe, be used to track continuing and, and uh, successes. Okay, so another little pathway there. Um, some characters. So you will have a character. You will pick a starting character and they will have starting skills. And we loved um, the diversity of those starting characters. What have I done with the cards here? 281. Have I taken these from the middle of the deck? <laughs> I think I have. So the 280s. Yep. Here we go. Put them back in order so we don't get lost trying to find them later on. So your starting character, which is probably in the deck of oh, with some interesting colors here. Um, your starting character, these are the exploration tiles. It might be in here. Uh, your starting character will have special abilities and it was really interesting, the diversity of characters in Seventh Content. I anticipate something similar in Seventh Citadel. I've seen some of the previews of the characters and they all have little special abilities. So are the characters in here, these are traits, food, which is important. These are items. These are not starting characters as far as I can see. I've probably opened the wrong pack. Um, I will keep opening until I find these characters because I'm pretty keen to see what they look like. Uh, probably have a special back. But yes, yeah, so your character, you can acquire skills. And when you, add a, you, when you acquire a skill, a card like this, you add it to your deck, um, which might increase your chances of, of getting a success. 
over the course of the game. You'll be building this map, you'll be building this knowledge, you'll be building up the capacity of your character, you'll be enhancing their skills and their items. Still no characters, still drawing the wrong deck. Um, this is very interesting though, lots of different, these are skill cards, okay, so um, you can purchase, often you can purchase these cards, at least in seventh constant you could, using points that you acquired. I could keep opening these packs all day and I'll probably never find the actual characters. These cards look a bit special. I might just have one more lucky dip at cracking open a deck to see if I can find the one with the characters and then I'll move on to this, uh, this what looks like a cloth map as well. Okay, are these characters? This is saving, saving. Yeah, here we go, characters. So let's have a look at some of the example characters. Denim, Casey, Brooks, and Arthur. And this seems to be, this seems to be four characters. So they are generic characters in the Seventh Citadel. Um, and they seem to have exactly the same stats. So maybe this is a little bit different. Maybe um, they've made them all the same in uh, your pathway. Maybe there's something peculiar about how these characters develop in the Seventh Citadel because I'm just looking and everything looks to be identical. Flipping over, I oh, said so crouching down, okay. Standing up, yep, everything looks to be identical there. But I notice all these skills, reflexes, a lot of reflex skills. Uh, yeah, I have to dig further into that. So I'll check that out later on, but that seems to be a point of difference as well, which I really liked in Seventh Citadel. I liked that you were Amelia Earhart or Frankenstein or uh, Lovecraft, HP, Howard Lovecraft, HP Lovecraft. All right, so let's have a look at, at this. This seems to be seems to be the world map. Um, and it has these nice little squares. So I'm guessing that's kind of where you place. It's kind of a, it's a plastic. There we go. Oh, that's it. So this is a world map. Um, and these are little plastic slots for locations. Um, and it's, it's, it, is a, it is a plastic, it's not cloth. And I may have to put that under some books to flatten it out. But uh, yeah, interesting. It does, it does convey that medieval feel for the theme. I don't know where the citadel is. Kel seems to be right at the center of the map. Um, it is the Kel Protectorate world map. Uh, I'd be very interested to see where we start and what we'll be doing. Um, this is a four by six grid. I can tell you that Seventh Continent was sprawling and not square. It uh, had a, it was very long and probably only about ten squares wide, but it had gaps in it, as you can see from those those maps that I showed earlier. So that is. That is our map. They are the components. These are the life dials. There's nothing below there. Um, I don't want to spoil any of the chapters for you. Uh, so introductory scenario and two threats. Um, I can show you some more. So you'll have and have like items attached. So you may have a, a map location uh, with, there are no map locations here, of course. But uh, you may have an item attached to it like that with the arrow pointing towards this location saying, this chest is in this location, and then there'll be a, a, a test on it. So you may come, come across a hut, which you then explore, which says reveal card, uh, whatever, and that will say, hey, you found this, you found this chest, and it's another action to then um, explore it and uh, pursue it. Um, so they all, all the cards come in these handy trays. There's nothing under there that I'm missing. Um, great for storage, great for packing up. I will put the foam forwards back in there for now. So I'll go through all these. They then are placed in there with these dividers, which makes it really easy. If you're looking for card 372, you just go 350 and then 12, uh, yeah, the 20 second card long. There are often duplicates of cards as well. Over the course of the game, you may upskill cards. So you most of the cards are, are green. But occasionally you will upskill to a yellow card, which is where you banish or remove the basic card from the game, and you will replace it with a sort of upgraded version. So that might happen as well. Dialogue book, um, map, which I put back there. Very intrigued by these community sheets. Um, as I said, the map, 
uh, a Destiny map, looks very interesting. I can see references here, so 301, 303, 307. Um, and I'm guessing we'll trace sort of a path through there. Uh, then we have side quests. Use this page to write down any information related to your side quests. So very cool, very exciting. Um, creature traits. So another thing about this is there is fighting, there is combat in the Seventh Citadel. Now there was some element of fighting in Seventh Continent, but it was often just a basic check, and if you had weapons, you'd boosted your check. In this, um, it's a bit more complex, and there are sort of skills like sword fighting, um, and because you have that life track, it is. Now, where was that? Where did I? I don't know how that fitted in. Um, was it something like that? Yeah. So you'll have a, a combat mechanism. Um, uses the same kind of idea, I believe. I did read it of. Um, uh, making checks, but it sort of, if I can quickly try and find if they still have it. Again, this is from the, the beta version of the rules. Um, action resolution. I think it works out much the same, but there are more sort of abilities and symbols to refer to sort of fighting. Um, Wants to move a massive boulder, compound action example. Um, take a number of cards, these are the consequences of action. So I'll, I'll need to reread this just to see. Uh, but this is the, the most important section is here. You are using life points. Um, you lose five life points when your deck runs out and then you reshuffle it. We are super excited about that. Uh, exploring the collapsed land, this is how you link the tiles together. Um, yeah, we love spotting hidden numbers. We would go you know, study these cards and sometimes they're really small and abstract. You might have a picture of a tree. Let me try and find some examples from the seventh continent. All right, so here are some of the, the action cards, but you may come across a map like this and we would look through the, the kind of cliffs here. He's like, is that an 11? Is that a one? Is that a one right there? And we'd kind of look closely and like, no, 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 it's just some art. Um, oops, don't get these out of order. Uh, which I just did, I'm pretty sure. So penguins and, oh, no, it, was, it was wonderful. Um, here we go, here's another one. Is there any hidden number in there? I can't see anything, but, you know, we might go, here's some rock patterns. Is that a, is that a five? Is that a Roman five or something? Uh, let's find another one. Here's an underground tunnel with some magic mushrooms. Here we go. What does that mean? How many, how many spikes are there? Is that a clue for something? Um, these bushes here, are they poisonous? Um... <laughs> Yeah, lots of really cryptic clues like that, um, which is fascinating. And there are, I mean, there were about, oh, 800, um, 800 cards in the seventh continent, close to a thousand. Um, and then we had the expansion as well, which added a whole, another box, which again, we, we never got through all the curses, as they were called, in the Seventh Continent uh, by the time we kind of got sick of surviving. Uh, so we are super excited about the Seventh Citadel. Um, keen to see if uh, the kids might be interested in playing it. Uh, keen to see how this new survival mechanic works. Keen to see how the threats work. And um, yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Check it out if it's of interest. If you like, adventure, exploration, um, you know, cooperative games. Um, this is a big game. It's long. It's not a kind of game that you can finish in a, in a sitting. Like I said, a, a single, in Seventh Continent, a single curse might take you 15 to 30 hours. And I anticipate something similar from the threats in Seventh Citadel. I would anticipate, based on everything I've seen and read, that a single threat, not including the introductory one, that might be pretty quick, but you know, a threat might take you 20 to 30 hours of gameplay. So if, if you like that kind of stuff, check out The Seventh Citadel. Thanks everyone and take care.